Okay, welcome to the second video of the Crypto Trading from Scratch video course. Here I'll be discussing the three types of analysis that traders use to make decisions, as well as at the end I'll give you an introduction to how to read charts. So right off the bat, here are the three types of analysis. We have technical analysis, fundamental analysis, and finally market sentiment. And so just starting off with technical analysis, this is the study of charts which are a visual representation or a visual story of what's happening in the market. So you can see the price action within a given market as well as the trading volume and a whole bunch of other indicators that uh, we will be going over later. And this is not a crystal ball. You can't just look at a chart and you know, know with a degree of high certainty what is going to happen but we can use things like pattern recognition and a variety of strategies that we will get deeper into over the next few videos uh, to make educated guesses about where the price is likely to go. And yeah, technical analysis is what we're going to be mostly focusing on in this course, but it is worth being aware of the other two types. So moving on to fundamental analysis, what is this? Um, this is everything from analyzing news events. So maybe something, some positive news comes out about Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency, which makes it go up. Or of course, some negative news like a big hack could uh, be bearish news. And so that would just be a form of fundamental analysis. Um, one issue is that insiders are often trading based on news articles that have not yet been released, which you can see in charts if you know what to look for. Um, but obviously you won't know that the news is coming out until it comes out. And so that is one benefit that technical analysis has over fundamental analysis. Um, but moving on to other forms of fundamental analysis, one thing is the inherent value in whatever is being traded. So if you think a certain cryptocurrency, for example, has very strong technology and a strong community behind it, you might think that it's worth more than what it's currently trading for. Um, or vice versa, if you think a coin has poor technology and it's trading for a lot of money, then maybe you would want to sell or short that based on your fundamental an analysis of that crypto. And I find fundamental analysis to be more valuable for altcoins and less valuable for Bitcoin, just because new altcoins are always coming out and they vary a lot, whereas Bitcoin, the fundamentals don't change that much. Yes, you may have new features like lightning and things like that, but usually that's already baked into the current price. So just be aware of that based on whether you're trading altcoins or Bitcoin. Um, and the most common and simplest fundamental analysis strategy is buy the rumor, sell the news. So a couple examples of this, uh, there have been some conferences for altcoins so for example, there was an Ethereum Classic conference a few months ago, and when the conference was announced, Ethereum Classic, the price of it went up, and then the day the conference actually happened, there was a big dump in the market, and everyone sold their bags. And so that's one example of kind of buy the rumor, sell the news. You buy a news event when it comes out, and then when the actual event happens that the story is about, you sell. Um, another big example of that is the CME Bitcoin futures. CME announced that they were going to be launching Bitcoin futures back in November of 2017. And that was actually the start of that massive bull run we had all the way from about 5,000 up to 19 or 20K. And literally the day that CME futures launched was the top of Bitcoin. And so my personal theory is that when they announced futures, which was a big deal, a lot of people were buying, thinking it would be a huge event and make Bitcoin, you know, go to the moon. And then the day futures launched, the whales um, sold into strength. And obviously the market has crashed since then. It's currently um, April 2018 when I'm recording this. So those are some of the major ways to use fundamental analysis. Um, I don't think it's necessarily good as a primary tool, but it is good to be aware of the major fundamental events that are happening within whatever market you're trading. And finally, we have market sentiment. And um, this, isn't, this doesn't go as deep as technical or fundamental analysis, 
but it is something to be aware of. Um, oftentimes there will be a clear bullish or bearish sentiment in the market. And the way you can determine this is what are people saying on Twitter? How are news stories framed? Things like that. And how to interpret it depends on specifically what is being said, as well as where the price is within a given market cycle. We're gonna be talking about market cycles and the different phases of that later on in this course, but one example is when Bitcoin was relatively esoteric and some well-known intelligent people were posting bullish stuff on Twitter, that would be an example of bullish market sentiment and you could maybe use that to you know, buy Bitcoin and hope that it would go up. Whereas when it gets extreme and you hear people, uh, you hear about people taking out second mortgages just to buy crypto, that's a sign that we're near the top and that a major correction is likely coming. And so it does take some experience to analyze market sentiment um, and incorporate that into your trading decisions, but those are the basics. So in my opinion, technical analysis is the most important of these to be proficient in as a trader. So that's what the bulk of this course will be focused on. Um, we're gonna be learning about 10 or so major different technical indicators or strategies and there are literally hundreds more, so you kind of have to choose what makes most sense for you, and you can experiment with different strategies. One thing I kind of wanted to mention is that there was a study I heard about done on horse race bettors. They were professional horse race bettors, and they were each given access to three to five specific pieces of information on the horses, and they got to choose which of these um, pieces of information they had access to, whether it was the horse's weight or something about the jockey. I don't really know about horse racing, but whatever. And so when they were given these three to five pieces of information that they chose, they were able to win a good amount of money in the long run betting on horses because they had experience analyzing those handful of variables. Uh, however, when these same Betters, when these same gamblers were given access to infinite information, they were given access to all the information available, and they tried to analyze everything, they actually performed basically no better than random chance. And so they actually performed worse with more information to analyze. And I like to think about that study in terms of trading and in terms of technical analysis. There are, as you'll see, dozens and dozens of different indicators and different variables you can potentially consider. But after kind of learning the basics, I think it's best to focus on a small handful and get good at using them to develop your trading strategy. So those are the basic types of analysis as well as kind of what technical analysis is. And now I'm going to show you what a chart looks like. You've probably seen one before but I'm just going to bring one up and show you how to use it. The website that I use for charting is TradingView. Um, and you can either go to just go to tradingview.com and make an account, or you can use my affiliate link in the description below the video. So here's what a chart looks like. And again, I'll go over the basics of how to read it. And then in the following videos, we will get a lot deeper and play around with indicators and drawing tools and things like that. So each of these bars, uh, this is a green bar here and a red bar here, each of these bars are known as candles. And the length of the candle represents the price action within a unit of whatever time frame you have chosen. So up here in the top left, you can choose your time frame. I've chosen one day. So when we choose a, a daily time frame, each of these bars is going to show the price action within that given day. And the days are shown at the bottom. So for example, this candle represents the price action on December 7th, 2017. And there are two main parts of a candle. There's the body, which is the colored in part, and there's the wick, which are the thin lines you'll see on the top and the bottom of each candle. So if a candle is green, the bottom of the body is where the day started, because remember we're on the daily time frame, and the top of the body it uh, was the price when the day ended. And the wicks show the high and the low of the day. So at some point during, let's take this red candle for instance, at some point during December 8th, the price traded all the way up uh, at 17,000. And the bottom was the bottom of the wick around 13.8 thousand. 
Um, but remember the body, uh, it opened at the top of the body since it's red, and it closed at the bottom of the body. So just to reiterate, uh, if the candle's green, it opens at the bottom and closes at the top, and it's green because it means there was an upward movement. And if it's red, it opens at the top and closes at the bottom, and the red means that there was a downward movement within that day. One question I get asked a lot is what time frame should I use? And the short answer is all of them. Uh, the more time frames sh that show a similar story, the more confidence you can have in a trade. And the answer also depends on how long you want your trades to last. So if you're swing trading, meaning maybe you want to make a trade and hold it for a week, um, you probably don't want to look at anything under an hour. Like I wouldn't be looking at the five minute chart if I wanted to make a trade that lasted a few days or more. A general rule of thumb is the higher the time frame, the more reliable any signals you may get are. So for example, if you have a significant indicator or line or anything on a one day chart, um, it might be meaningful and help you trade, but that same indicator or line might be meaningless noise on a one minute chart. And in the very next video, we'll dive deeper into reading candles and how to use candlestick patterns for technical analysis to actually help you start trading. Um, but that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see y'all soon.